Welcome back to Bristol Campus. Shalom, everyone. As we are now within the period before Purim, we're within 30 days already before Purim. And in Breast of Literature and Rabbi Nachman's teachings, Purim has a very major, major place of its importance and the power and the amazing benefits that a person can get from investing properly in the preparation towards Purim and on Purim itself. Specifically, what we're talking about, what we mean is prayer preparation. Rav Nosin wrote a beautiful prayer in his book called Likutei Tfilot. In English, it's been translated as the 50th gate. It's prayer number 37 of part two of the 50th gate, Likutei Tfilot. How Likutei Tfilot works is this part one, which our prayer is based on part one of Likutei Moran. And that's a much much bigger selection of prayers. And part two of Rav Nosin's prayer book, Likutei Tfilot, or translated 50th gate, our prayer is based on Rabbi Nachman's part two of Likutei Moran. So in the part two of Rav Nosen's prayer book, 37, he wrote probably one, one of the most amazing and often recited prayers of the entire Likutei Tfilot. It stressed so much, specifically because Rav Nosen himself, in his letters to his son, Rav Yitzchak, in the book called Alim the Chufa, or in English, The Collected Letters of Rav Nosen, Rav Nosen writes to his son, make sure you say this prayer as a preparation for Purim. And it's pr probably the only one, or the second one, there's another one on, by the side, but it's probably the main prayer, or the only prayer we can say, that Rav Nosin emphasized somebody to make sure to, re to recite this prayer. If you, have, if you take a look at this beautiful prayer, you will see that it includes in it all of the yearning to receive the light of Purim. Because people are not really aware about it, but the mitzvot of Purim, which is the Megillah reading, the giving the Mishloach Manot, giving out the food portions to your friends, giving out alms to the poor, Matanot Levyonim, and the meal, and then the drinking, getting drunk, all of these mitzvot accomplish unbelievable benefits and breakthroughs for a person in his spiritual quest, in his personal quest to come closer to Hashem. It unleashes yearning and desire of all year round to really come close to Hashem. That's why on a, on a basic level, when God-fearing people and good people drink on Purim, you hear the most amazing things coming out of their mouth, mouth. Yearning and desire to come to Hashem comes out like no other time of the year. And it, it's not just that because they're physically drunk, but it's the holiness attached to it, to the whole preparation and attitude of this day, Purim, that gives this boost in bringing out, like the Gemara says, Nichnas Yain Yatsasod. Wine comes in, comes out the secrets of a person. But in this case, the inner good desires and yearning of a person. So because of that, it's really very much emphasized and encouraged for people to recite the prayer. In our English publications, you can find the prayer translated fully in these two books. You have here, Entering the Light, which has the whole prayer in its entirety for Purim. Or here in this book, where you have the translation Hebrew on one side, or in, and English on the other side, prayer number 37 of this book. Um, just to sum up, Rav Levi Yitzhak Bender, who was an elder of the previous generation of the Breslov movement, he was also the one who would recite the Megillah in the Breslov Kloys, the shul, in Uman itself. We're talking about the 1920s, the 1930s. Okay, he was the, he was a, he had a very strong voice, Rav Yitzhak Bender, and obviously had fear of heaven, Yer Shemaim, at a good level. So he was appointed to be the one to recite the Megillah in public in the Breslov Shul in Uman. He would recount that the intensity of the yearning was so strong on the night of Purim when he just recited the blessing before reading the Megillah on the night of Purim practically the entire congregation in the breast of Chloe's would break out weeping and crying and he couldn't he had to wait several minutes I think he said even over 10 minutes he'd have to wait in order to finally begin the Megillah, because people were crying and yearning, not out of pain, not out of panic, not out of fear, but out of the tense yearning 
revealed on already the night of Purim, before drinking. There's no, no drinking yet. It's just the night of Purim because of the preparation that the most breast livers put in anticipating and in yearning for this festival. He said that they would be crying. Even the woman would be crying. The men, women, the whole congregation would be crying out of yearning, feeling the power intensity of this festival. So the least we can do as a preparation, for sure in our own personal prayers, is to, as a good suggestion, to include this beautiful uh, prayer from Rav Nosen as a preparation for Purim.